and welcome to another Kings of War Battle Report with me, Stephen from Death by Dragons. I don't need to think of a cooler online name than Stephen. Sounds a bit more like a plumber. Um, not that plumbers are bad, just saying, you know, but I need to be a bit more like my hero, Visibly Riley. He's Visibly Riley. I mean, invisible Stephen. It's possibly a little bit derivative. Answers on a postcard, please, for cool online names for me. Um, you know, think, 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 striking fear into the hearts of the masses. That, that, that's the vibe I'm going for. And Stevens, it, it's not cutting it, despite being my actual name. It's possibly why I don't strike fear into to anyone's hearts. Oh, Kidoki. Um, welcome to another Kings of War battle report. Uh, this one, shockingly and surprisingly, played with actual people in the real world. So be prepared for some poor quality photographs, as opposed to the lovely uh, Universal Battle. Although there is a bit of Universal Battle in here, which I'll come to later. So this is my elves versus the forces of the Abyss, controlled by the wonderful Logan, uh, who is part of the um, amazing Celestial Forge people. Um, so we played it in their brilliant studio over in Kidderminster. Um, if you fancy a game, then possibly shoot them a, an email. I'll put a link to their um, Facebook uh, in the description of the video. So if you want to uh, shoot me an email uh, and come and hang out sometime, if you happen to be in the area, that would be cool. I think they're going to look at um, organising a tournament at Worcester sometime, so it'll be uh, keep an eye on their Facebook page for that as well. Uh, but really nice uh, gaming environment. It's really cool to play actually in a in their little studio, which is kind of their shelving units all around the sides, which is just filled with really nicely painted armies, just shelf after shelf after shelf of armies from everything from, you know, 40k through to Kings of War. It's really, really nice, really cool. Um, so Logan's part of that group, uh, and he bought the Fosses of the Abyss, fresh from the uh, Black Dragon tournament at the weekend. So, uh, here are, wow, that's quite the image. Um, here is his army. So, you start with the Trooper Gargoyles two regiments of lower abyssals where he'd taken off the shields and given them two-handed weapons for a bit of crushing strength but they were defense three plus a regiment of tortured slows so, slows tortured souls uh with a lovely five point using up your points blade of slashing then he had two regiments of abyssal horsemen uh, one with the mace of crushing and one with the potion of the caterpillar Give him a pathfinder uh, one of freet with his really lovely Fireball 20 or something ridiculous. Uh, he gave me the heart seeking chart for a bit of piercing. Uh, one Archfiend of the Abyss with wings, Lightning Bolt 5, and the Brew of Haste, making him a speed 11. Effectively a speed 11 dragon. Um, a charge of 22, that's mm, faster than anything I've got. One Cronius. Um, I'm not so wild on Crano, he's, he's got a lovely breath attack. And that, but is it breath attack or fireball anyway? And it's 20 or so again, something ridiculous with piercing. Uh, but he is really expensive, what he is. And one uh, <laughs> lovely, shortly named Demon Lord Bale, Bane of the Mortal Kingdoms. You need to get it all in there. Who is another stupid monster? I mean, let me just uh, let me just find his description just to read you off what he's got, just in case you don't know. So, uh, Demon Lord Bale. Oh, uh, no, no, I'm not here. Ah, bollocks. Basically, he's got. Fury, Vicious, Crushing Strength 2, Fly, uh, you know, he's got every single rule. He's a beast. He is a beast. Individual. Oh my god. Yeah, so, um, and he's on a 25 by 25 base. Don't like him. Not a fan. And my elves, which are completely unchanged from last time, so we'll just quickly skip through them. There you go. Two regiments of archers, one with a heart seeking charm, a horde of tall spears, two regiments of forest shamblers. Two horse dragon riders, one with the Brewer's Trick, one with the Chalice of Wrath, uh, an army standard bearer with diadem, an elven mage with bane shot, two with alchemist guts, uh, an elven prince mounted on a horse, and a dragon kindred lord with the boots of levitation. There you go, that's my elves. So, um, for the layout of the territory, I will show you the pictures, the actual photographs, but because we've covered them with crap like dice and books and more importantly, armies, um, I laid it out in Universal Battle first. Oh no, whoa, before I go, whoa, 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 hold on there. Um, I forgot, it's a real battle with real models. So here's a picture of the models. Um, these are Logan's uh, Abyss models. So these ones are his um, Lower Abyssals. They're pretty nice. And this is Demon Lord Bale, Bane of the Mortal Kingdoms. Uh, you see, tiny base, ridiculously strong character. There is his Archfiend. Uh, with a bit of a green flames motif. 
Uh, there's Cronius carrying on the green frames motif. Uh, and there's some gargoyles. Not a lot you can do with gargoyles, I think. But uh, the basing's really nice. Uh, and there's his Efreet. Did I mention the Efreet? I think I missed the Efreet off his list. He's got an Efreet. Yeah. Um, and that's a really nice base. I like that base a lot. Those are his. Um, what would they be? Tortured Souls. Tortured Souls. Right, and I have shown you most of my elves before, but I finished some of my units that I hadn't finished previously. Um, so these are my first unit, unit dragons. These are the, the old cow cold ones, but I stuck some wings on them. I think they look pretty good. Um, there's also a tree, for no apparent reason. And these are the other ones, which obviously are completely different. This is a wild mixture of models. Some of them are reaper bones, some of them are uh, you know, silver dragons from various different things. Anyway. A wild mix of uh, genres there. And that's my other uh, uh, regiment of dragons. And this is my little standard bearer. With his little diadem of dragon kind. And I realised as I uploaded this, I never actually finished highlighting his clothes. Hmm. Got too carried away doing the banner. Anyway, those are the only units I've got that are, are new that are painted. As you can see, some of the other units in the back there. Very nice. And onto the battlefield, as I was saying, which I laid out in Universal Battle just to show you what it was, because it was just a bit clearer, I think. So, this is how it was set up. So, you've got uh, two height four forests, you've got a height two hill, you have three height four buildings, and then you've got um, some height flat terrain to attach the buildings, and three height one walls scattered across the battlefield. Um, Looking at this uh, battle, I I kind of hate it. It's not, you know, basically what it what it what you've got is a nice open fighting area on the left and an area that no one is going to be mad enough to go into on the right because look at it, three buildings, all those walls, no madness. Um, so it's not a balanced battlefield, but you know it is what it is. So we went with that. And they say you can kind of see how it goes. Yeah, there's the houses. Yeah. Get it? Kind of. Good. Right, so, forgive me, I took this briefly after deployment, so I'll show you where the deployed units are and then we'll move on to the first turn. Get Logan's arm making a little, uh, little entree there at the top. So, the Archfiend, which you can see has moved forward already, was back there in the corner, with the Torture Souls in front of him and the Gargoyles in front of them, so a little stack of units there. Then he deployed the Abyssal Horseman, which he's just about to move in that picture into the forest because they've got Pathfinder. Where else would you put them if they've got Pathfinder? That's the Ifrit, which I missed off his list. Uh, there are the two um, lower Abyssal units. That is Coronius. There's the other unit of Abyssal Horsemen. And <laughs> last but not least, uh, Demon Lord Bale, Bane of the Mortal Kingdoms. I feel it's important to include his full title at all times. And then on my side, I deployed uh, largely into the sane area of the board. As you can see, so I've got Archer Horde 1 and 2 ready to hop up onto that hill. In fact, Archer Horde 1, Horde Regiment, Archer Regiment 1 is 50% um, on the hill already. So we can actually see everything from there, which is pretty cool. Then we've got our two units of Dracons behind them. And don't forget the hill is height 2 and the Dracons are height 3, so they can be seen already. Uh, there's the standard bearer from. There is a horde of tall spears. Yeah, the forest shamblers, a uh, vanguard of them, as you can see there, but that's where they were when they started, right into my deployment zone. There is my little prince, and there is the mage. Dragon, kin dragon kindred lord there, next to them. And the other forest shamblers were there in the woods, because that's where you put your units with Pathfinder. Um, so that was my deployment. Okay, uh, the scenario we rolled was loot. So um, loot is where you have uh, D3 tokens. C3 tokens? No, 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 it's just three tokens, isn't it? One in the center and two more tokens, one each um, along the center line. Uh, and you go and pick them up, and who's got the most at the end wins. So the three tokens are here, as you can see. Alrighty then. So this is my vanguarding move, so I just shoved my units forward. So the units on the left were just at the edge of um, the Archfiend's charge range, because he's got a 22 inch charge range, which is ridiculous. Oh, so they're just at the edge of that, so he didn't charge them in the first turn. Don't really like any alpha striking. And the others moved up to um, just beyond the charge range of his Abyssal Horseman, for the same reason. 
So, uh, the Force of the Abyss, turn one. So this little unit moved up here on the left, and followed by literally everything else, pretty much doing the same thing in various different di uh, directions. So everything just moved up a little bit, um, to just outside my charge ranges, because we're not stupid here. Then the Archfiend did some lightning bolts onto my uh, Dracons, doing one point of damage. Uh, and then the Demon Lord Bale, Bane of the Mortal Kingdoms, did the same, because he also has Lightning Bolt amongst everything else, uh, onto my Forest Shamblers doing, again, one point of damage. So some pretty unlucky rolls, uh, it's fair to say, at the beginning of the match for, for, uh, for Logan. On to Elf turn two. So um, this unit of archers moved up onto the hill to join his compatriots and 50% on the hill. And then we chuck some arrows. So the left hand archers did, I think, six, four or six points of damage? Six points of damage onto the gargoyles, which is pretty lucky from 10 attacks. That's some good rolling. Uh, given the. Are they the ones with. No, they don't even have um, the, the chant. So, you know, that was just very, very good rolling. And the archers did four points of damage onto the Abyssal Horsemen, which again was some pretty good rolling, given they got high high defense. So, good, good, good shooting, lads and ladies. Okay, the, um, right, yeah, that little square wooden thing is the prince who shot across to do some nice blocking for me. Um, and the reason he's a wooden base is because that hill, while it's really nice looking, is not very convenient for models and he kept falling over. So that's him, the base. Uh, Dracons moved forward to present a bit of a threat. Uh, the Shamblers shuffled up again, as did the Torspears. And the Dragon shot over to support the uh, Shamblers on the right-hand side. And that was my turn. So, uh, Force of the Abyss turn two. Um, so Logan really rushed in in this turn, which is, you know, um, it's a tactic, but we'll see how that went. So, um, these horsemen charged my prince, doing seven points of damage, uh, but not managing to wave him, which is pretty lucky for the prince, because he's a, um, I think he's 11, 13 nerve, so to, to, to not be routed by that is, again, lucky, lucky for me. Um, the tortured souls rushed into my archers and did three points of damage. Turning off their shooting for next turn, which is uh, annoying. Uh, these guys, these um, lower abyssals, uh, moved up to, I assume, take the loot token next turn. And then he double charged the um, forest shambler unit here with the other unit of abyssal horsemen and demon lord Balebane of the Vortal Kingdoms, and wiped them out, which is not that surprising because that's a quite a, a lot of damage, a shit ton of damage in a, in a single turn, so they were completely destroyed. But, uh, if you think about my dragon, who can fly, it's not placed him in a great position for next turn, so that's probably why I put him there. Um, the Afrit moved over and chucked a lightning bolt at these Shamblers, doing a couple of points of damage. Is it one, two? A couple of points of damage. Which is, again, poor rolling, because I think that's a 20. Lightning bolt, fireball. It's a, you know, a fire-based attack for a lot of damage. Uh, but I only did a couple of points, so unlucky rolling again. Lucky for me. And the Archfiend unloaded on my other unit, my other um, Dracon unit, I think doing a couple of points of damage again. So two or three points of damage uh, there. And that was the force of this. There you go, that's the little combat. Um, that's the piece of uh, base with the blue zack on it, representing my prince. That is the double attack onto my Shamblers before, shortly before they were wiped out of the entire universe. Okay, and then uh, Elf turn two. So this is when the fight back commenced and it really didn't go great um, for the Abyss forces to be honest. Um, I just got very lucky with a lot of rolls to be honest. So first of all, the Dracons on the left shot over the top of the archers and smashed into the unit of Gargoyles. Um, Obliterating them, which is nice for me. Then the archers on the left, um, I realised I had a flank on the um, 
torture souls that had charged the other archers. So we counter charge with the archers and we flank charge with the other archers. So that's 30 attacks. Um, even hitting on fives, um, it was enough to. I think I chucked in a, a Bane charm possibly from the, from the wizard. And it was enough to kill them, uh, which was uh, again really good rolling for me and unfortunate. The tall spears moved over here. Uh, what did we attack? Oh, the horsemen! Right, so the epistle horsemen were here, weren't they? Because they charged into the prince. So unfortunately, because they hadn't mullered the prince, they were left um, with a flank, uh, and we took a flank charge. He took a flank charge, even hindered from the tall spears. Um, that's 60 attacks, which is um, not very survivable, uh, which was uh, pretty unfortunate for him. Uh, and these Dracons charged over the top into the Efreet, which he hadn't realised was within charge range, and again, unfortunately, totaled him in a single charge. Really lucky rolling for me here. You know, that's four units gone in a single turn. Um, pretty hard to recover from. Um, the Shamblers went back into the um, Lower Abyssals, doing a couple of points of damage, not a great deal, just kind of chipping away. And the Dragon predictably uh, flew over the top of these couple of units and did I think six points of damage with a breath attack onto the lower abyssals. And that was elf turn two which was um, a very lucky but very successful turn. Here's the combats. Um, so there you go that's the that's the flank charge and the front charge so that's my prince going back into them and the uh, tall spears into the side on top of the fence. That's the poor freak getting squished. That's the Shamblers going back in. Note temporary base. And that's the double charge from the archers onto those uh, poor tortured souls who are now being even more tortured. And there's the dracons going into the gargoyles. I don't know why I took, took photos. These are the only photographs of charges I took, but I was particularly pleased with them. Um, so I think uh, taking a leaf out of Riley's book, I thought, I'll, I'll, take, I'll show you off the charges. There you go. But I didn't actually do that for the rest of the uh, game. I guess one more later on. Anyway, right, so. Uh, Force of the Abyss, turn three. So, Demon Lord Bell shoots over here to provide some support to these beleaguered forces. Whereas these two um, on the right, the um, Lower Abyssals and the Abyssal Horsemen, turn to face the dragon to stop me rear charging, which is pretty sensible. Right, then the Archfiend uh, plays his part by shooting over the top, uh, not wishing to face my Dracons and instead manages to total the archer unit with the chant, um, heart seeking charm, uh, which is uh, pretty cool. And then he turns to face uh, the other archer unit for the next turn, because it's in their flank. Um, right, so the uh, lower whistles go back into the uh, forest shamblers, but only manage a couple of a couple of points of damage, they're up to five damage now. They're really robust though, Some really robust chap, um, quite impressed. But, you know, part of it was poor rolling. Uh, and then Iacronius turned round and, along with um, Demon Lord Bale, unloaded uh, all of their ranged attacks onto my little Dracon unit, uh, killing them. Uh, which was a little bit unexpected uh, and unfortunate. But there you go, that's our Dracon's gone. It's only 270 points, I mean, <laughs> who cares? <clears throat> Elf turn three. So, Elf turn 3, uh, the Prince went into the back of the Archfiend, which makes no difference because he's an individual. Um, and the Archers also attacked from the front, so we did a minuscule amount of damage. I think you can see four points of damage total, not great. Uh, so he was pretty unscathed by that front and rear, sticking something rear up his bum, doesn't even mind. Rear? Something sharp up his bum, I would say. Uh, these Dracons couldn't really do anything from where they were. Um, so they just kind of moved over to present because uh, they were facing the opposite side of the board so they couldn't uh, turn charge, they weren't within the charge range so they simply turned 90 degrees and moved around and then turned again with their nimble just so they were ready for the next turn. Uh, what happened here? I literally can't remember. No. We just turn round. Did the tall spears just turn round? Okay, the tall spears just turned round. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so they turned basically. They turned to face Demon Lord Bale. 
uh, Bane of the Mortal Kingdoms, and then the, the um, Sand of Air moved back because he didn't want to um, charge in the arse either. So they just turned to face and uh, be ready for the attack next turn. The Shamblers went back into the Lower Bristles, who had been healing off quite a bit of damage uh, and didn't really do anything, which is poor. But they did pick up the loot token this turn, because I'd forgotten to pick it up the last three turns. I just figured they'd be dying the next turn, so there wasn't any point. But since they steadfastly refused to die, um, pick up the loot token. And then the dragon shot over uh, and took Cronius up the bump, which was not pretty. Uh, 30 points hitting on threes, damage on threes. Um, yeah, Cronius uh, didn't stand a chance and got obliterated. And that was Elf turn three. Right, I didn't take a photograph of the Forces of the Abyss turn four, so I've recreated it uh, on the template of the map I did before. So, just very briefly, the Archfiend uh, turned around to um, counter-attack the Prince. And the reason he did that was because the Prince is an individual, so if he killed him, which he almost certainly was going to because he already had seven wounds, he could potentially overrun into the Tall Spears, which he did. He needed a four, so he over managed to overrun the requisite four inches to flank charge my Tall Spears. Fortunately, not wavering or killing them. But it was pretty close, I think seven points of damage he did. Um, the he had, what, he's got nine, so doubled 18 attacks, uh, hitting on threes, damaging on threes. Um, yeah, I think I got pretty lucky there. Um, Demon Lord Bell, Bane of the Mortal Kingdoms, um, uh, ran into my army standard bearer for the same reason. Again, individual, so he's hoping to um, knock out the standard bearer and overrun into the tall spears. Uh, unfortunately, while he did kill the army standard bearer, he overran one inch short, um, so uh, stopped just in front of the tall spears. For you. Um, once again, the lower wrestlers went into the forest chambers, but this time they did actually manage to kill them. Ooh, uh, stealing their loot token. So at this point, it is 1 0 to Logan. Then the missile horseman uh, turned 180, ready to come and spot next turn. And the other lower oh, it's actually 2 0 to Logan because he's got the other um, loot token here as well. So these lower wrestlers shot off to the right, picked up the loot token, um, and pretended and, and tried to leg it basically as far away as possible. So Elf turn 4. So what we did here was a multi-charge. So the um, Tall Spears um, counter-attacked, counter-charged into uh, Demon Lord Bell. They could have charged, not Demon Lord Bell, uh, the Archfiend. They could have um, uh, charged into Demon Lord Bell, but that would have been a new charge which would have been hindered because they were on a fence. Because they went into the counter-charge counter into um, the Archfiend, it wasn't hindered. So they could hit on fours. So they went in the front and the archers went in the side. Um, so between them they managed 12 points of damage and got a waiver, which sounds brilliant except that he has fury so it's completely pointless. Um, the Dracon shot across the board and uh, flank charged the... Um, it was flank charge or front charge? Whatever it was. Anyway, they still managed to do enough damage to finish off these lower abyssals and stealing their loot token. So it's now one all. Um, yeah, there you go. And the dragon uh, turned and shot across the board and did some nasty breathing onto these other abyssals who are trying to escape, doing a total of 9 points of damage. Uh, but no waiver. So, uh, gosh, I wonder what will happen next turn. <laughs> um, there you go, first attack. Oh, and um, the mage, who is still there, he's been either Bane Chanting or, or, or Alchemist Curse, and so he stopped some Alchemist Curse onto the um, onto Demon Lord Bale, did 5 points of damage. Which is pretty good. Actually, five points of damage from a, a, a six roll, six dice roll, hitting on four, and then hitting on four, and then a one, two, three, four would damage him. That's fantastic rolling. So, well done, me. Uh, so, Force of the Abyss, turn five. So, again, I uh, really apologies, massive apologies for my uh, poor photograph taking, but I kept on forgetting because it was quite exciting. Um, so, this was taken slightly into Elf turn five. So. I've shown you originally where the units were, so on the left my archers were facing uh, that way, and on the right my dragon was facing that way, and the lower abyssals were facing to the right, and the archfiend was here. So Force of the Abyss turn 5, um, archfiend went back into the tall spears, uh, killing them, along with demon Lord Bale. 
So I think he totaled the tool spears. And then he turned to face. Uh, is it face the archers? I can't remember. Um, the horsemen shot over to um, attack. To charge the um, dracon riders. Uh, and did enough damage to get a waiver. So they were wavered, losing their fly. Which is a good result for them. Then the lower vessels uh, simply turned around because they realised they couldn't escape the dragon. Uh, so they turned to face them, hoping to see off a charge. And elf turn five. Uh, in response, uh, the archers went back into Demon Lobel. Don't forget he had 12 points of damage already. So their 10 attacks... Um, with a bit of Bane Chant, I think, from the mage was enough to um, do for him. And then they turned back to face the loot token for the next turn. There you go. The uh, poor Lower Abyssals, unfortunately, with the amount of damage on, they already had 11 damage from Breath Attacks, um, were just crunched into tiny pieces by the dragon who stole their loot token. So now it is 2 1 to the elves. And then he turned to face there. Can't think, imagine what he's going to do next turn. Uh, the Dracons, because although they were wavered, they did have Fury, uh, went back into the Abyss of Horsemen, um, doing zero damage, which is crap, isn't it? 18 attacks, no damage whatsoever. But it was a nice try. Uh, they now, unfortunately, have a flank charge from Demon Lapel next turn. I was really hoping then he could, because if they'd have wiped out the Horsemen, they could have turned to face and it would be nice and I could have had everything, but can't have it all. Uh, the end of turn, so this is the end of turn 6, so apologies for this, um, I just forgot to take one at all. So, in order, what happened was Demon Lord Bale charged into the side of the Dracons, as expected, um, and the multi-charge from the Horseman and the Demon killed off the Dracons, so the Horseman then took the token. Um, my, then in my turn, the Archers uh, move forward to take the loot token. And... Oh yeah, the mage did a bit of um, alchemist cursing, which uh, took him up to nine points of damage, but didn't uh, manage to get away from anything like that. He's got a reason for that now. So yeah, that was the end of turn six. So at the end of turn six, oh yeah, and the dragon missed. I think yeah, 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 completely missed uh, all of his breath attack as well. Just uh, ending the game with some really crappy rolling. We roll for turn seven. There was no turn 7, and so the game ends on a 2-1 victory to me! Yay! Woohoo! What? I'd just like to say thank you to my mother, to my father. Actually, I wouldn't like to thank them at all. Um, I'd actually like to point out that we actually played this game on the clock, just to practice for tournaments and that, um, and I clocked out in turn 4 because uh, I'd never played on the clock before, so strictly speaking, I lost this game horribly, despite the fact that I actually won. It was a friendly, so we carried on, and Logan's a really nice guy, um, uh, who was really happy to, to help me learn. So, yeah, really, really good. So, what did we learn? That's what we do. What did we learn? So, we learned uh, distances are really important. That's one of the things that, you know, I was really conscious of when I was measuring things out. Um, it's always stayed. It was probably why I was took so long with my moves, is I was really trying to stay clear of the, the charge, particularly the Archfiend who had a charge range of 22, which is incredibly hard to stay close on. Um, archers in melee, a surprise favourite. Even hitting on fives, they are pretty good. A side attack, a, a flank attack, a 20 attacks, is um, is difficult to shrug off, I would say. And one of the things that, that Logan wasn't happy about with, with his army is they had reasonably low, low nerve values across the board. Um, so, you know, a few points of damage did make a big difference for a lot of his units. Um, and the use of chaff, you know, I think Forest Shamblers are increasingly impressed with them because as chaff, you know, they're, they're not cheap, cheap, cheap. But, um, you know, they've got Crushing 1, their Defense 5 plus, they're a, they're a dash 14 in their troop. That's a, that's a pretty solid unit. It takes a couple of turns to knock them off without a multi-charge, so, um, yeah. Um, I was really pleased with how I used them this game. I think it worked really well. So, last but not least, thanks for watching! Um, this is actually one of uh, two games I played in that day, so uh, I will be back relatively soon with another battle report. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know if you did in the comments below. If you didn't enjoy it, 
please feel free to, you know, fuck off. Anyway, alrighty, thanks very much.